Okay, so I've got a brand new quad setup guide today for Retrobat users, and I know I've got a lot of subscribers for Retrobat on my channel. I think that's pretty evident from the other night on my live stream and the amount of subscribers who's come in from my individual setup guides. So we got a few different MSX systems to cover today and that's going to be the MSX, MSX2, MSX2 Plus and the MSX Turbo R. So what is MSX? So MSX is a little bit like the Panasonic 3DO or just 3DO. It was an idea for a microcomputer which many different companies make their own versions of but it goes a bit more in depth with that and you'll often find MSX under the Microsoft category. Uh, M is believed to be Microsoft. Uh, the acronym MSX, it's widely debated what that actually stands for as a whole. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get MSX a series of computers running through Retrobat, which files it is you're gonna need, uh, and also which game files you need and also how to enhance the games to look better if you're not really into pixelation, so check this one out. Okay then, so if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit subscribe and also hit notifications and like so you don't miss upcoming Retrobat content. And be sure to check out my entire playlist for Retrobat. I've pretty much covered, well, a lot at this point and I've still got a hell of a lot more to get through for Retrobat. So first of all, we're looking at MSX. And what you can see here is the Philips version of the first MSX uh, from around 1983, 1984. So obviously we got a big boom jaw in that era. We got Commodore 64 and in the UK, we got Sinclair Spectrum. Shortly after, a couple of years later, Amstrad comes out. And so MSX falls in line with that, although these are more largely sold in Japan. So what we're gonna do first is just open up Retrobat and take a look which BIOS files we need for MSX. <laughs> Okie doke, so we're in Retrobat and what I'm going to suggest is let's find which BIOS files we need. So easiest way around this is if we go into the main menu and I'm pressing start on my controller, uh, just go to game settings and if you go to the bottom you'll find missing BIOS check. And here you will find a list of every system that Retrobat has and this is going to tell you which BIOS files Retrobat specifically needs. So obviously in this case, we are looking for MSX. So let's just continue scrolling up. And here we go. So we've got MSX. And if we scroll down a little touch more, we'll see MSX2 and so on. But for this part of this setup guide, I'm just looking at MSX. So uh, here's MSX and we need MSX ROM, uh, disk.rom, fmpack.rom and so on. So just take a picture using your phone or whatever, just so you know which files it is we need for this one. And I'm also going to let you know that RetroArch has two cores for this through Retrobat, but there's also a standalone emulator. So what I'm going to do first is go to Retrobat shortcut, right click on it, open file location. And now we know which BIOS files we need for MSX1. If we go to batch UI, we can also determine which file extensions our game should be in. And you can do this under system list and system at the top. If you don't do, if you don't see this list, which I've got just here, uh, check out my comprehensive setup guide on Retrobat. It's quite likely you're missing a couple of files during the initial Retrobat installation process. So just scroll down then until we get to MSX1. And just here in extensions, uh, these are your game extensions. So if you've got zip games, if you've got seven zip games or games in the .rom extension, all of these are going to work fine. And like I was saying just a minute ago, we got a couple of RetroWatch cores. Uh, this is Libretro RetroWatch course. So now we know which game extensions we need for MSX1 and the boss files we need. So what we're going to do is start making this work. So uh, whilst we're in the Retrobat directory, 
Uh, first of all, go to BIOS and you can just drop your MSX files, your BIOS files, inside of this folder. So let's just drag and drop, right click, and we'll paste there. And in a minute, I'm going to go for the Open MSX emulator, which isn't a core, but we can download that one through Retrobat. And if we back out of here, uh, go to the ROMs folder, and we're also going to find MSX1 just here, and we've got MSX2, 2+, plus, and Turbo. Uh, but MSX1 for this part, and I've got MSX game here in .zip. And as we determined just a minute ago through batch .zip is a file extension, which is going to work. So what we're going to do is open up Retrobat again. Okie dokes. So we can now find MSX here and let's firstly grab some artwork for this in a preview video if there's one available. So main menu, scraper and scrape now. And let's just wait for that to scrape. That should take a few seconds. Okay, scraping finished. Update game list to apply changes. So we're going to just go back up the game settings, update game list and press on yes. And here we go. So we've got a bit of artwork and we have got a preview video. Now, if I go to view options by pressing select on my controller, advanced system options, emulator, uh, we'll find those two Libretro RetroWatch cores here ready to go. And this is going to boot up with Blue MSX if you leave this to auto. However, like I said, we've also got Open MSX, so we can download this one separately. And of course, each one of these cores is where well with a standalone emulator, OpenMSX is all going to have their own strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to first boot this up with Libretro Blue MSX. So just press Auto and let's go into Gradius 2. Okay, so as we can see, that's working really well. Uh, we can also customize how that presents itself. As we can see, we got decorations around that at the moment. And if you're not sure what decorations are, if we go to view options again, advanced system options, decorations, uh, this is the decoration. So it's obscuring and putting in place something a little bit more better to look at. Uh, so we can take away the decoration and replace it with something else. But what I'm going to do is just select none for this. And if I go to shader set, we also got shaders, kind of like filters, which can sometimes enhance these games to make them look better, to make them look more retro. Uh, scan lines, for example. Uh, let's put scan lines in place. Uh, we've also got game aspect ratio. And by auto, uh, this is going to just use the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. I'm going to go to custom. Integer scaling is a very good option to put on. And as you can see, this is already going to be to put on uh, by just keeping this one on auto, but whatever. And that's going to make the pixelation around the sprites in the game just disappear a little bit and blur it out. Vertical sync, I always say yes to. It eliminates screen tearing. And in a game like this, we can see the sprites are really lagging along. Uh, so that's probably down to hardware of the MSX1. But nevertheless, if we put vertical sync on, it might give it a possibility of taking some of that away. 
So if we go down a bit further, visual rendering, smooth games, and this is another really good option to take away pixelation. So just make sure this one's on auto or on. And another really good thing about using RetroWatch cores with MSX1 is we have the no sprite limit. So as it says on here, it can reduce or remove sprite flicker in some games. So as we've seen in Gradius 2, there's a lot of that going on. So let's put this one to yes. And let's boot up Gradius 2 again. So scan lines are now in place. So as you can see, that stutter hasn't completely disappeared. Um, it's obviously got problems with the hardware compared with something like the Commodore 64 could have produced with its own hardware. So whilst we're in this menu, if we go to Advanced System Options again, if we scroll down to where it says Controls, we got Player 1 Control Type, and you can actually switch this one over to Retro Keyboard and use your controller as a keyboard, as it were. So... Finally, for MSX1, like I've been saying, we also got the opportunity to download a standalone emulator to use through Retroback called OpenMSX. So if we go to view options once more, advanced system options, if you go to emulator and choose OpenMSX, and let's boot this up with OpenMSX. So obviously we need to install this, so just click on yes and give that a few seconds. And what this is saying is that we need to put some BIOS files in a new folder that this is created, and that's really easy to do. So if we just exit out of Retrobat, so main menu, quit, and what we're going to do is just head back into the Retrobat directory, so open file location. If we go into BIOS, we'll find open MSX. If we go into open MSX, we'll find another folder called share. And once we're inside the share folder, I'm going to create a new folder. If you don't see this, then do what I'm doing. So new folder, just call this folder system ROMs, not system TOMs. And open up system ROMs and then drag in your files inside of that systems ROM folder that we just created. And here we go. So let's open up RetroBat again. Okay, so let's open up this game once again with OpenMSX. So make a note of where it's asking for this next BIOS file to go. And what I'm going to do next is put this one into the same place where it's asking us to. And we're in. Awesome. And obviously this is now using OpenMSX. So obviously, like I was saying, if you've got particular games and they're not going to run, OpenMSX is a very good emulator to use outside of RetroWatch cores that MSX1 has. So obviously, we've also got certain configurations we can play with if using OpenMSX, but nowhere near to the scale of what those RetroWatch cores were offering us. So that's it for the first part of this video today. This is MSX1. Next I'm going to look at is the MSX2. Okay, so we're moving on to the MSX2 here. And this in my wallpaper, this is a Philips model uh, variant of the MSX2. So the MSX2 released in 1986. And it featured pretty much uh, some major updates, upgrades rather, to the previous 1983 MSX. So you'll find better video and better graphics, that type of thing, in the MSX2. So what we're going to do with this, again, is just open up RetroBat and we're going to just check for those BIOS files that we need.
Okay, so again, we're going to go to main menu, game settings, and missing BIOS check. And let's just scroll down and find out which BIOS files it is we need for the MSX2. And as we can see, once we get to the MSX section, we can actually use the same BIOS files as we did in the MSX1. So that's not a problem. So we're going to come back out of this and exit out of Retrobat. And so we got the same files in place, the BIOS files in place. All we need next is to put a game into the folder. So again, I'm going to go to Retrobat directory. And let's just check which file extensions we need for MSX2. So system, and just drag this down until you get to MSX2. And we got the same type of file extensions here. So feel free to take a look at this. Uh, my game example for the setup guide is gonna be in a .zip file extension. And if we took a look, we also got two RetroWatch cores which support this. So we're gonna to go to ROMs. And from ROMs, we can then find MSX2. And here it is. And what we're going to do is just drag our games inside of here. So like I just said, I'm using a .zip file extension for this. So my game for this setup guide today is going to be Arkanoid 2. So let's open up Retrobat again and see what we got. Okay, so I've deleted MSX1 games from the previous setup guide. And this is now displaying as just MSX. So we can make a custom folder out of this if we want, but I'm gonna just leave it in this folder for now. So again, I'm gonna get some cover art for this in a preview video, uh, Scraper and Scrape Now. Uh, some games might not scrape any artwork, but for something like Arkanoid 2, a very popular 8-bit game, uh, I'd imagine this one's gonna scrape. And whilst we're here, under view options, advanced system options, uh, we've also got the Open MSX, uh, which is a standalone emulator, which I downloaded and installed for MSX1. So this is going to be using the same setup as MSX1 through Retrobat. So pretty simple stuff with MSX2. Uh, we've also got the same type of options for video settings. Uh, but let's go ahead and just update this. So game settings, update game list, and yes. And here we go. So I'm going to leave all this on default settings. So everything is on auto and it's actually using a uh, Libretro RetroArch Blue MSX core for this. So I'm actually using my keyboard this time round, and I'm using my cursor key to control uh, Mr. Arkanoid, whatever uh, his name is. But if you want to use this through controller, then it's a simple case of going to the view options menu and changing this over. So if you are having any issues uh, using your controller on this, as I said, I was using my keyboards just a minute ago, uh, we can actually set this up to use controller. So view options, advanced system options, and right at the bottom, we'll see create path to key profile. So from here, we can define our controller to emulate the keyboard, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna just tap on D-pad up, and now, for the game I was just playing, I wasn't actually using the cursor up. But what I'm going to do is just define this by pressing my action button. And if I go to down, just use the keyboard you see on the screen to also correspond that with down. Uh, left again, just click on left on the cursor, it's just there, and right. And start, I'm going to set my controller up to use my start button. Uh, select, I'm going to use Backspace. And once you've done that, just go down to the bottom. It's entirely up to you if you want to set all of these up. And let's just go to save and back out and go back into the game again.
And as we can see, or rather as I can see, I'm actually using my D-pads now to control this rather than using my cursor keys. And of course you can also do this uh, same process with the MSX1 too. So for those of you who want pure nostalgia, stick with your keyboard. Uh, but if you prefer a controller, So let's come back out of there again. And what I'm going to do is just show you the settings I've got there. So of course, I've gone to edit pad to key profile and I've made that happen. Uh, under controls, also be sure to keep both controller types with retro pad. So that's it for MSX2 in this quad setup guide I'm doing today. So next up, I'm going to be looking at the next system is the MSX2 Plus. Okay, so next part is the MSX2. So MSX2 came out around 1988, at which point Microsoft had actually departed working with MSX, as it were. So what we're going to do is take a look how to set this one up. It's very similar to the other two systems. And I'm also going to introduce to you, if you've not checked this out, a website where we can get brand new releases for MSX games. Uh, but first of all, what we're going to do is head back into RetroBat because there is an additional BIOS file that we need for this. So open up RetroBat. So first of all, we're going to go back to Game Settings, Missing BIOS Check, and just scroll down and we will find MSX2. Uh, so different features which MSX2 Plus games had or rather the hardware had, was additional connections for videos such as RGB, that type of thing. So uh, just like you would recognize on many different technologies, whenever you see plus, it implies it's a more superior version of its predecessor. So here we go. So for MSX2+, Plus, we do need a BIOS file, MSX2P.ROM. So let's come out of here again and main menu and quit and we're also going to check out which file extensions our games need to be in so back to ui once more system list and drag this down till we get to msx2 plus and here we are so pretty much the same as the other two systems previous to the plus model uh, pretty much the same file extensions there uh, the same core is being used and also it's going to be the same emulator if you wish to use that open msx so we know what we're doing here plus we got the addition of a, another bios file so i actually included this additional bios file in with mine earlier on during this setup guide today uh, but what i'm going to show you is a website to get some new games if you're interested in new games or msx so this is itch.io and I love this website. It's pretty much all free, the vast majority of it. Uh, just type in MSX2 or even MSX into the search bar at the top and we can download some new games. So let's check this out. So for example, I've got Spellbound MSX. And if anyone knows our classic microcomputer games, uh, Spellbound was quite a popular game on the Spectrum. Uh, this is an MSX port. So if we just open this up, we can download this. So uh, what we're gonna do is just scroll down a touch and find the download link. And here it is. So we can download this in .cast.disc.rom. So I'm going to go for the .rom because that's going to be the quickest option of loading games. If you go for a .cast, that's going to be a cassette image and that's going to take a little time as well as .dsk, which is a disc image. So let's go for the ROM and download spellbound.rom. And here it is. We got spellbang.rom and that's ready to put into our retrobat directory so again let's go to the retrobat directory roms and this time uh, just like the msx1 i deleted the game i also deleted msx2 game arkanoid from the previous setup guide i'm going to find msx2 plus and here we are so let's just place my dot rom game inside here and open up retrobat again and again, we got MSX, so it doesn't say MSX2+, Plus. although, like I say, if you want to create a folder and uh, title this as MSX2+, Plus, 
you can do that. And to do that, all you need to do is just pretty much go down to game collection settings and uh, create a new collection from there or whatever. I am going to do a setup guide on that one at some point, but let's crack on with MSX2+. Plus. So let's grab this some artwork and because this is a new game, it's unlikely to have any artwork at all. Uh, plus, if you look at the spelling of that, uh, the scraper is unlikely going to scrape. Uh, seeming it says, well, it's spelled differently. But let's try this. And I tell you what, what I'm going to do is if this fails to get any artwork, I'm going to show you how to edit. So let's go to main menu, game settings, update game list. Yes. And just as I thought, we've got no artwork. So main menu quit and what i'm going to do is just edit this file so as long as we keep the extension in place the game will still work fine so keep dot rom in place and i'm going to just right click on it show more options rename and i'm going to call this one spellbound and like i said if this was a zx spectrum game then more than likely it would find it uh, but seeming this is a new wish game and it's considered a homebrew game it's unlikely going to find it but this is what you need to do if you do need to rename your games it's really that simple just right click and just edit the name as long as you leave that extension in place open up retrobat again then Okay, so let's try and download some artwork again. So Scraper and Scrape Now. And Game Settings and Update Game List. And yeah, just as I suspected, it's literally this is a new game. But anyways, nevertheless, View Options, Advanced System Options. Uh, we're using the same Retro Watch course here, and we've also got uh, the Open MSX Emulator. So let's just boot this with auto again so spellbound but as we can see the decorations recognizes this as msx2 plus we're just going to press b on my keyboard to select joystick in port a and d to play the game and my keyboard's working fine. Uh, so this acts just like a Sinclair ZX Spectrum game. As we can see, that's working perfectly. And the reason I don't know what I'm doing in that game is because I've never played that before. I know it's a classic, and at some point I will dive into playing that one once and for all. So next up, then, we have got our final MSX system, which is the MSX Turbo. So we finally arrived then to the last MSX system, and this is the MSX Turbo. So at this point, then, Panasonic was the only company pushing these out and they had two models and they discontinued in 1994. So there wasn't really many games for the final MSX system. Uh, so the game I'm using for this one is a game called Turbo Blaster and this one is in DSK file. So hardware wise, what Panasonic did with the last two models they produced of the MSX Turbo was just removed some date in media. So for example, the cassette deck wasn't really optional anymore and they made some more adjustments to make things better but you know you had other things happening in the background uh playstation emerging the sega saturn uh the n64 i believe soon to come so msx and that whole concept of microcomputing was pretty much coming to an end at that point and this is really a simple case then of just dragging and dropping dot zip or in my case, uh, we got .dsk. So if you want to extract this and use .dsk rather than .zip, that's entirely up to you. It's both going to work. So Retrobat and uh, open file location for the last time today in this video, ROMs, and we're going to find obviously MSX Turbo. And here it is. So let's just drag this one in. 
and open up retro but again like i said it's going to be using the same bios files so we don't need to get any more so open up retro bat again <laughs> And here we go. So we're presented with the same logo. And here's our game. Uh, it's highly unlikely this one's going to scrape either, given it's not popular. So we're going to see anyway. So let's just go to game settings, update game list. And yes. And like I say, we don't have any artwork for this. Uh, if you find this and you do want to try by editing the top of the game, like I just showed you on the MSX2+, Plus, you can try, but likelihood of this showing anything is pretty slim so view options advanced system options emulator the same as what we've had in the previous three models so i'm going to just open this up with auto again and everything's on default As we can see everything's working fine and i'm going to just go through video settings once more today to wrap this up so van system options uh shader set uh i'm going to go for one of my favorites which is curvature and that's going to give us a crt look to it which is an old school uh style box tv almost so uh decorations i'm going to go to none on this one and that's important to put decorations to none in the curvatures case under shader set otherwise it's not going to truly show its effect uh game aspect ratio i'm going to put this one to custom again let me remind you if you put some of these games to 16 by 9 they're going to look stretched and they're not going to look right so custom Integral scaling, you can either leave this auto or I'm going to put this to on, either way it's going to work. Uh, vertical sync, yes to eliminate any screen tear. And visual rendering, smooth games, I'm going to make sure this is on or just keep this on auto, either way it'll work. And also we got the option for the sprite limit as well. So just put this one to yes to reduce any sprite flicker in your turbo games. So with this done, we've also got the option to create pads a key. So let's go back into this game again. So as we can see, we got a really nice curvature CRT image now. So that's it for today's quad setup guide on an MSX model computer. So I put a bit of history in there as well in case 
uh, you're not sure what MSX are and what it is. Uh, like I said, I've explained that each one pretty much had different companies manufacturing their own style of it. Up until we get to the Turbo model, in which case Panasonic just produced two models of these. So, like I said at the start of the video today, if you like what you see, hit notifications, subscribe and like. Don't miss out on upcoming Retrobat content. And be sure to check out my other setup guides for Launchbox, Batacera, Play Night, Retroarch. I cover a lot of content for emulation on my channel, uh, Retro Emulation Setup Guides, that is. I'm also asking uh, for donations. I'm trying to expand my channel to include portable setup guides. So I'm asking for some donations and that would be very much appreciative. And also be sure to follow my community because I'm gonna be announcing at some point another live stream. But until next time, stay retro.